Welcome to Step by Step Electronics. Today we're going to talk about. Wait, no, I'm going to hit it myself. Before I even start the video, just scroll down. No, pause the video. Scroll, scroll down. And click like and subscribe. Thank you for doing that. Whoever did it. Anyway, the previous video we talked about batteries and how you know they let the electrons flow with you know chemistry on it, boring jump. Well, and if you didn't see that, it'll, I'll highly recommend you see it because it's the core of everything I'm doing right now. Right? That that was my previous video. So, so today we're gonna talk about you know breadboards, a way to prototype and learn electronics in a non-permanent way, LEDs, an alternative to light bulbs that are super efficient. Capacitors, kind of like a battery, but has a set amount of time or storage. And then resistors, exactly what the name says, resists electricity. So let's first talk about this breadboard. As I said in the kind of like blur, I guess, it's a way to prototype your circuits before you make them permanent or learn them. That's how we use it. Connections are made, you know, here, all this right here, all this right here, all this right here, all this right here. And if you get yourself a breadboard, make sure it's solderless, I would recommend putting your battery pack or whatever, the positive, the red one right here, and the negative right here, because that's typically how most devices and stuff have their wires, right? So, cool, cool, cool. This is a LED. As I said, it's way more efficient than a light bulb. Why? Because this makes, it, well, it optimizes light output. <laughs> so fancy with my words. It optimizes light output. So, you know how LEDs, when you're like, when you have to change them or something, and they touch it all hot? Well, it's like, half of the energy where it's going to making heat we don't want heat we want light it's a light bulb that's exactly what a uh led makes it's it's light it's all it makes optimizes light output minimizes heat output also it's polarized if you look at the acronym led it stands for lighting emitting diode what does that mean it's a diode that emits light. And what is a diode? A diode is a polarized wire, basically. This longer side, uh, can you see? This longer side right here can only take in positive. Takes a negative, don't work. This negative, longer side, I mean shorter side, can only take negative. Right? I'm going to demonstrate that. Oh, I made this circuit right here so I can control how I use my electricity. We'll be going that, going into that in you know, future video. But first, we have to know this because, as you can see, basically all of these components are used in this circuit, and you have to understand them before you can use them. So let me turn it on. Right there, we go. So it's on right now. Right? It's cool, cool, cool turn it around put the positive into the negative <gasps> doesn't work do it turn it back around it works again see just as I said so that's the LED alternative to light bulb better and doesn't blow out unless you put in too much electricity this is a capacitor like I said, kind of like a battery with a set amount of capacitance or storage. Right, but chargeable. Keep charging these. Right? But how does this one, how does this particular type of capacitor work? Well, what, what there is is two plates. Two plates like this. Real close together. Way closer than my hands are. Right? So when you put positive right here, negative right here, what happens is, they want to go to each other because 
because you know that's that's the goal. If you look at my first video, that's the goal to get to each other, cause cause they love each other, but they can't, cause there's a gap of non -con conductive substances, it's usually air or it could be you know paper or something. So what they do, they they make they make magic happen. They make a field. They make an electric field around it. This electric field stays there even when you disconnect the power it just stays there but then once you add a way for it to go back like if this is positive has that positive electric field and negative if you have a positive right here and negative right here right and then you put a like I said positive right here so if you put like a negative uh, like part of the battery right here what happens is this one will go down the electric field will go down and go into the wire and the same thing will happen over here which is pretty cool it charges up just the same way so you know just charge up the battery charge it kind of think of it like charging up a battery this one is also kind of a diode in a way except for work in the other direction but i wouldn't really recommend it at high voltages because it might explode but this one's shorter leg is negative, longer leg is positive, as I said before. So I'm gonna do that. Alright. Oh, I don't know if you saw that, but it just flashed for a second. Let's 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 see some. Let's charge it up for a second. All right? And then put the positive side this way, and then put this over here. Oh man, my hand! One more time, one more time, one more time. Charging it up. Put the positive side where the positive needs to go, and put the negative side where the negative needs to go. And as soon as I connect it, it flashes. Then I charge it, what just happened? Oh, I know you saw that one. Pretty cool, right? And it jams out because you know it's not a full battery. So I'm going to use a wire and then put some positive energy into here and then when I click this button this positive energy will go and charge the capacitor with this thing on once I let go with the capacitor's store voltage it will slowly go out right so let's see it's on let go slowly dims that's it and capacitors are stored in ferrets that shows how much capacitance it has this one I was using previously has a hundred microfarads microfarad what's microfarad I do believe a micro is I think it's a thousand pretty sure it's a thousand of the base number which is just a ferret right so a hundred thousand nah it's not thousands it's way more than that right but you, you can put that in the comments if you want. But this, that was 100 microfarads. This is 220 microfarads. So it's two times more. So there should be a significant difference. Press the button. Same thing happens. Let go. Oh, oh you see that? Almost kind of like. See that? See how it just stems? It's pretty cool. Okay, okay, almost done, almost done, almost done. So now, last, last component is the resistor. A resistor does exactly what the name says. It resists electricity. And this resistance is measured in ohms. And basically, you can say everything's a resistor. Conductor or not, it's a pencil. This pencil could be a... Uh, a resistor because it resists the flow of electricity. Positive right here, negative right here. Tiny bit of those, tiny bit will flow through here, and that could be measured in ohms. Probably like real crazy, like a billion or something. So we wouldn't use that, but and we and it would be kind of hard to measure it. It'd be kind of hard to measure it, but we could do it. But these have a color code, these resistors. 
bunch of colors that show how much resistance it is. This particular one has 470,000 ohms, right? So if I put that in, saw how, see this? Put this resistor in. Barely shines. I can I can see it. I don't think you can see it, but I can see this. It's so dim, right? Change it out. This one is a thousand times less than, so it's 470 ohms. Put that in. Significant difference. Now there's two different ways you can set up resistors. You can put in parallel, like this. Or you could put in series like this, one after the other, right? What the series does is puts it adds on these two resistances. You can have infinite amount of these. You just add them up, right? So this is 470. This is 470. So that equals 940. So together, this acts the same exact way as a 970 ohm resistor. Cool. This one is a little more complicated. It has a bunch of mathematic stuff, which I'm going to get into later because we don't really need it right now. So, you know, kind of acts like one a little bit. Right. So, yeah. That's it. And I bet you were wondering what this was. What, what this is. Well, this is a future project we're going to be making. And I keep this on most of my breadboards. Because it's really easy to switch on and off, you know. I just switched it off. Alright, let me turn on. Come on, turn on for the video. Oh. And then it turns on, right? That's one of our future projects, right? Cool. So, uh, that's it. That's all I'm going to have for now. Next video, we're going to talk about. Uh, transistors. This is a transistor. Hint, hint. And we're going to talk about circuit diagrams. And then once we do that, we can start making circuits. And I think our first project could be like a little nightlight. Yeah. If you're scared of the dark, you can set it up and have a little nightlight that you have for free. So that's all I have for now. Stay tuned for the next video.